Okay. So I guess the bottom line here is uh, drugs like ketamine and psilocybin, you start to see antidepressant effects in human clinical trials within a couple of days, roughly speaking, yeah. maybe one day, maybe a few days, depending on the drug and the details. And, but that's you know that's uh, quite a stark comparison to SSRIs, which in which case you're talking about weeks or even months before you really start to see significant change. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, I think it's also fun to compare. I think useful to compare with other type of treatment. And even I think um, if you think about the uh, repetitive transcranial magnetic stimulation, there are actually some really good advance there in terms of uh, accelerated protocols that you can also see effects within days. Um, another thing that I think you can see a fairly rapid effect would be um, ECT is another thing. Um, whereas other thing, SSRI, um, Deep brain simulation is another one that could take a while. So yeah, I think the time scale of why these treatments work at um, different uh, timing and uh, the need to uh, wait and the, that delay for some of the treatment versus other is something that is just really not understood and quite a mystery. So you've done a variety of experiments and, and other people have in the last few years looking at you know what are things like ketamine and psilocybin actually doing in the brain? Um, we'll probably eventually get to mechanistic stuff, but let's just start at the level of plasticity. When you do your imaging experiments and you administer these drugs to animals, what do you see change in the brain, morphologically speaking? Yeah, so we did a, a study, first study along these lines uh, in 2016 with ketamine, and then follow up with another one in 2021 with psilocybin. Uh, in both cases, what we observe is that uh, the number of dendritic spines uh, increases in the frontal cortex of the mouse. Uh, and this increase is quite fast. So we would administer the animal a single dose of either of these drugs, ketamine or psilocybin. We go back to the same place and look 24 hours later. And you can see, start to see the formation of new dendritic spines in the dendrite that we looked at previously. Uh, and in both cases, the um, increase tend to sustain. So in ketamine case, we look at about for about two weeks. In psilocybin case, we've looked at in the initial study was one month. Now we've done two months, and these increases uh, are quite sustained uh, in terms of the uh, changes uh, of, of in the number of dendritic spines. When you say sustained, do you mean you administer the drug one time and then you know weeks or even a month or two later, you still the same spines that sprouted in response to the drug administration are still there after that amount of time? 